to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I'm Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. So are we, are we back on a regular schedule now? It looks for that a little way. Bit? Yeah, yeah. At least for a little while. Yeah, good. Yeah, until, until you know, I guess I guess winter ball's next, so we got a little while. How how far away is that? Probably a month or two. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> just two, a little while. Two tops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we get uh, somewhere between five and eight episodes on a normal day, and then <laughs> we're back to <laughs> switching <laughs> things up all the time again. Okay. Yep. Well, that's, that's, great. That's how it goes. <laughs> yeah. I suppose. Yeah. They need to just change the game days. Yeah, you know, I, I they had should a, accommodate I, her schedule. <laughs> I've had a talk with them, and they don't seem to be budging on this one. Oh, damn. <laughs> like, have they listened to the podcast? Maybe they would change their mind. You if know, they maybe to the they podcast. would, but I don't. I, the, so far, no luck. <laughs> uh, well, damn. So, yeah. All right. I guess we'll we'll have to change our schedule to accommodate softball. Yeah, but right now we're on the good schedule, so. We'll call this the good schedule. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's de- it's certainly better because um, if we if we miss today, then we still have some more shots to get it in by the end of the week. Exactly. Um, on the other schedule, that that becomes a lot harder. Yeah. yeah. The weekend meet is a challenge. <laughs> yeah. At least at my house. <laughs> yeah. There's always something going on. Well, I um I was definitely ready for a drink when we sat down today. Yeah. Yeah. Long day. Uh, frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, just a frustrating day. I, we'll, we'll talk about medical <laughs> stuff later. Yeah. Some, some other podcast. I'm not ready to talk about it because. Because you're dealing with it. Yeah, because I'm irritated. <laughs> it's all and like too fresh. I feel, yeah, I feel like it might be too biased. Yeah. Because oh. we don't, we don't do bias oh, on this yeah, podcast yeah. No, at all. <laughs> not, not at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's no agenda here. Um. Ooh. Okay, well, um, I, I thought that that we might get started with. Uh, is, okay, so I don't remember specifically if uh, during our many coronavirus talks yeah. um, we talked about the uh, the likelihood of um, COVID nineteen originating at the uh, Wuhan lab. Yeah, I don't know if we really got into any of that or not. I know, I mean, I know what my position has been. Yeah, I've <laughs> like, certainly, I don't know that I've, yeah. I've said it on the podcast, but I've said, for, and I may have, like I may have, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I've always been of the position, you, there's no way to really know. You're not, I don't know that we'll ever fully know one way for, or the other for sure. But I've always thought it was just too much of a coincidence that this thing originated in Wuhan and there happens to be a lab there that does this type of research and it just didn't come from there. Like I'm sure it's absolutely possible that it didn't come from there. It just doesn't seem likely. Yeah. Um, I, I think that, I think that I've mentioned it, but I didn't really get into it cause it didn't seem important at the time. Yeah. The, the more important issue is what the, the repercussions. Yeah. The pandemic was being used to excuse on the part of government. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not that this doesn't relate to government, and we'll get into that a little bit <laughs> yeah. um, in a minute. But um, I can't recall. I, the only thing that I'm I'm really confident that I brought up was uh, debunking the the um, bat soup theory. Oh yeah. Do you remember the bat soup thing at the at the yeah, beginning? Yeah, no. That, oh, I, I, well, you know they're yeah. selling these bats in the wet market, and the Chinese eat the bat soup, and blah blah blah. And there was this video going around of this Chinese girl eating the bat soup and um it came out pretty quickly although it wasn't immediately it, well it wasn't widely um dispersed i don't think that this was a chinese uh tourist in thailand oh i do remember that i do <laughs> like, remember that yeah in a fancy hotel in thailand yeah. and um so the the whole bat thing was was bunk from the start yeah. and uh and i'm i'm really confident that i'm brought that up on the podcast because i was so irritated about that whole thing (laughs) yeah um but i don't know that i i I don't remember spending really any time on the wuhan lab thing so here's the here's the to sum up um the uh they do what's called gain of function research at this lab yeah um and to back up a little bit gain of function well I, i guess we should define that first uh gain of function research is when they um they genetically modify viruses to make them more dangerous. And the idea is 
Um, you're modifying them in a way that you expect that the virus might mutate in the future so that you can get ahead of it, yeah. right? Like, so you can test um, answers to a, a more virulent or a deadlier um, version of the virus that might mutate in the future by going ahead and triggering that mutation yourself and then having it in a controlled lab environment. Et and then you can find out how to, how to treat it and things like that. Yeah. Like that's the idea. Yeah. Which I think is, <laughs> well, it seems, we'll say ethically questionable right well, from the beginning. But. Not only that, because you don't, to me at least, and I'm no expert in this field, but it just seems to me you'd have trouble knowing that what you did is what would happen in, in the wild. Yeah. Like, I mean, that, that seems like it would be a problem, yes. but maybe they have ways of like narrowing it down. Well, this is what it would do maybe, but it just seems like that would be too hard to predict. Well, from my understanding of it, this is what I would say, and I can even use bats as an example. Yeah. Um, the uh, you're right. Um, I, I think that they can look ahead and and say, okay, you know, the kinds of things that we're concerned about is that it uh, it spreads easier, or that it's more deadly, or whatever, and we can create mutations that do that. Yeah. Um, but like, even a virus genetic code is a is huge. Yeah. Um, and so while those kinds of mutations may happen in the wild, it may not be by modifications of the same genes. Yeah. Which would create a different outcome. Right. Um, and, and of course, you know, this is convergent evolution. This is a really common thing. And, uh, th the way to use bats as an example is that there are two kinds of bats identified. Yeah. Um, they they have them identified as large bats and small bats. Yeah. So the large bats are mostly frugivores, mostly eat fruit. Um, they don't have echolocation, and they're generally of a larger body size, which is why they're called large bats. Yeah. Um, the small bats are the little insectivorous bats that have echolocation um, and are generally smaller. Yeah. Okay. And seem more creepy than me. I don't know why. <laughs> mm, yeah, probably. Um, actually, I like the little ones better, but... It doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, the, the point is that there is a um, there is a theory with some reasonable evidence, genetic evidence behind it, to suggest that those come from completely different lines. Oh, That really? it's, it's what's called convergent evolution, where two different evolutionary lines find the same um, answer, solution to a problem. Yeah. And, and I make it sound like, which is the, which is like the it's reason. directed, and it's not. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's, it's random. But, um, but that, they still come out to be close to the same... Thing, but took different paths to get there. Yeah, like a gross example would be just the development of wings generally, right? Yeah. Um, like insects have wings and and bats have wings. Yeah. But there. But there's no, no connection. Yeah. There's yeah. no evolutionary connection between the two. Yeah. And so, but in this case, there is an evolutionary connection, but it's it's so far down the line. Yeah, it's back far back down the line. Yeah. Um. So the idea is, uh, that the small bats. Um, were rodents that grew wings. Yeah. I say grew wings, that developed uh, flight. Mm. And that the large bats were primates, monkeys, huh. that developed flight. So Interesting. Yeah, so the, the wings don't have the same root evolutionarily. Yeah. Um, they developed on lines. And now, obviously, these are both mammals. They're close, more closely related than insects and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. bats. But um, that they were completely, like, it was independent evolution that brought them both to flight. To the same thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, and so, yeah, I agree. If that happens in this case, like you can predict what the results of some of these changes might be, but you can't necessarily predict the genetic, the actual genetic mutation that causes that change. Yeah. And if you, if you miss, then, you know, your treatment may not work. Exactly. I mean, that would be my concern. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now then, uh, gain of function research was outlawed in the U S years ago. Yeah. Um, and so instead of doing this research here in the U S because it's potentially dangerous for exactly, for this exactly reason. this reason. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so the U S government now outsources that research Yeah, <laughs> and specifically to this place, this isn't the only place I am yeah. sure, but, um, there is. U.S. government money, meaning taxpayer money, yep. um, that was used to fund research at this lab on coronaviruses. Now, uh, of course, Fauci says, well, we didn't specifically fund gain-of-function research. 
Yeah, but... But, yeah, I mean... I mean, if you're funding the place that it's going on at, like, I mean, you can fund it without directly funding it, you yeah. know? I, I mean, mean, would have anybody have um, accepted that argument for, like, Joseph Mengele? Yeah, like, if the U.S. had been funding Nazi, uh, a Nazi lab, and they were doing um, ethically questionable research on uh, Jewish captives or prisoners of war or whatever... And he said, well, that's not the research that we were funding at that lab. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we were funding completely different research. Yeah. I don't think that anybody it's, would accept that. Exactly. Um, that argument. And this is no different. Yeah. Like, I mean. um, and of course, the you know they are actually studying bat coronaviruses at this lab. Yeah. Um, the bat that has the coronavirus that this seems to have descended from lives like a thousand miles away. Definitely didn't come from the wet market. So yeah. um, then they made the extra step that it transferred to the, what the pangolin, isn't that? That the, maybe the bat virus went through the pangolin, and that's how it got to people. <laughs> I, I mean, the, yeah. you're starting to stretch. Yeah. Um, and of course, the WHO went over there and did an investigation, but it was tightly controlled by the the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah. And so they weren't. I, I don't think they even got access to the lab. Yeah. Um, and if they did, it was specific parts and, uh, you know, under supervision and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So. Which is part of the reason that Trump pulled the funding for the WHO. Yeah. Because, because he, he had said, he was like, look, this, you're, this is an organization that's not doing what it's supposed to do. <laughs> well, and that's the funny thing about this now is that remember Trump was a racist for suggesting this yeah. all that time ago. Well, and there's a big reversal all across the mainstream media about this topic, and it's about this theory. So funny to watch them try to walk this line now, mm -hmm. where they're trying because I've I've seen quite a few just different talk shows where they're talking about it, and it's like like they can't get like it's just it's completely out there that Trump said this from the beginning, and he's being proven right. Yeah, <laughs> and it just. And he was a racist for saying it, but Joe Biden didn't. Yeah, but Joe Biden, it's completely different when Joe Biden says it. And they're yeah. very open in the media. Like the news report I saw today, they were very open that, yeah, you know, Trump suggested this from the beginning, but it was just, it it wasn't the same coming out of that administration as it is. It has a whole different feel coming from Biden. And it's like, come on, guys. Like, I mean, at least be honest about it. Like, you, you're just, you're one-sided. <laughs> well, and um, the... It's funny watching them walk it back because you got, you know, the uh, this got 12 Pinocchios before. It was a totally debunked theory. It's been proven false, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, these are things that were said in the media. Oh, absolutely. Now, if it was proven false, yeah. how can it be a legitimate theory now? Yeah, exactly. And so uh, there were a couple of things that I wanted to talk about on this. And one of them is that there is a tremendous difference between proof and evidence. Yeah. And evidence has different value depending on the source as well. Yeah. But just because somebody says something, even if they're an authority, yeah. <laughs> that is not proof. Yeah. No, no joke. But it's treated that way. And in in I guess in lay terms, it's often used it that way. Yeah. Um, but evidence is not proof. Yeah. And just it's just it's so frustrating to me because the media will say something and they just expect you to just take it to the bank because they said it mm -hmm. with no nothing to support it at all. Like, yeah. and that's that's what this has been. Well, and in like I said, even when authority says it, now most of the evidence um, that's that was used to prove this false under Trump um, is is hearsay. Yeah, essentially, it's not even good evidence. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so. so, and of course, um, argument from authority is is a logical fallacy. Um, yeah. Just because somebody who knows something says something doesn't make make it true. Absolutely. Um, and Fauci is a great example. Uh, the guy has said everything, so yeah. about half of what he said is true. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, his his best person to debate with is himself. Like yeah. <laughs> you can like put tapes of him just debating himself because he's, I'm sure that's all over YouTube. I'm sure it is. I haven't looked, but I yeah. mean, it has to be like, yeah. and if it's not somebody else, somebody should do, that. should do that because I'm telling you, the, the guy's all over the place. So, um, so that's the main thing is that when, uh, when the media says something is proven false or uh, a government employee says something is proven false, 
find out what that proof is. Yeah. Because chances are it's not proof at all. Well, in 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 the defense of the media too, Trump came out claiming all of this, and he didn't have any evidence either. Yeah. Like it's not I mean, like he's circumstantial I mean, evidence. You have a lab that's studying bat coronaviruses. I mean, he has that. Near, <laughs> he had the evidence there. I had that I started the yeah. podcast with, which is like common sense, like yeah. you know. But this I seems mean, like the most likely exactly. Scenario. Yeah. But he didn't have like he didn't have the goods. Like I mean, or, or if he did, and I kind of believe maybe they did have the goods, and that's what I kind of think what's happened here and this is just my you know theory Mm -hmm. is so trump said this he had the goods didn't release it and kind of went with that theory now biden's gotten in been like oh well he was right the whole time well we got to start like trickling this out and start well he's given the intelligence agencies 90 days to prove where the coronavirus came from yeah now i suspect that we will probably find out sometime in the future what really happened here more or less yeah it's not going to be this year yeah, yeah, I, I I would agree with that. Um, and there's uh, you know, there's plenty of places that you can go for. Uh, gosh, I should have written that guy's name down. Uh, I listened to a long form interview, um, with a, a Washington Post. I think I think it's a Washington Post reporter. Yeah, might be New York Times. Anyway, one of those papers. Yeah. Um, that uh had been invested like seems to be a real investigative journalist. Yeah. And um, he's been looking into this for a long time, and he had. Um, plenty of what is real evidence. Yeah. Um, some of it circumstantial, but some of it, you know, pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, to point in the direction that this this virus came out of a lab that wasn't um, wasn't well maintained. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I that would I would honestly I'd be surprised if we found out it went the other way. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, I I agree. Um, and then just a little side note on this. Um, I was listening to uh, Dave Smith on this, and um, and Rob Bernstein made a comment that I was like, I don't know why that hadn't occurred to me, but he's absolutely right. He said, you would think that if you have a lab that is investigating and creating yeah. um, really virulent strains of, of viruses, yeah. that they might have a special hospital for those people to go to <laughs> yeah. instead of sending them to a regular hospital with everybody else. It seems like I you mean, might try to keep them in isolation. <laughs> well, and it seems to me like that's a such a great point, but it's it's such a great point because like it's clear that they don't have that. And why would they not? Like, it just yeah. seems like to me, like that would have been a no brainer. Like, mm-hmm. okay, we're setting up this facility to do this research. It's going to have its own medical facility. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I think it should be like in the facility. Like, yeah, yeah you shouldn't even have to leave. Like, yeah. oh, you got the snuffles. You need to go to the other wing over there. And get <laughs> ch- you may need to be quarantined. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, we're not going to let you even leave the facility. Yeah. Like, that should be the way that goes. And clearly, from what I've seen, at least, that's not how this works. <laughs> no, it doesn't seem to be. <laughs> so. Um, so then the other side of this, uh, going back to the, um, that this was funded yeah. by your tax dollars. Yeah. Right. At least partially. Yeah. Um, and so what I thought about was, uh, the, I, and I've told this story many times. I, I saw this scene on the weather channel many years ago. It was a snowstorm or ice storm somewhere or another and a public school bus, um, slid and hit like a telephone pole or you know some kind of street pole not hard it was like a very minor one of those accidents. like little slow bumps <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah. um and so uh you know they they called 911 of course yeah. and uh and then the um the public sector ambulance shows up and the police show up and so like a police car shows up first and um they don't manage to stop either and <laughs> They slide and slowly run into the back of the school (laughs) bus. bus. And then the ambulance shows up and the same thing. It was like a cartoon almost. (laughs) But I think about that all the time because to me that perfectly represents government. Yeah. Like, so in this case you have um, government tax money used uh, to presumably to solve a potential future problem. Yeah. But what it actually does is create a new problem. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have government money, your tax money again, yeah. um, used to create the answer to that problem. Which, guess what that does? 
which is the vaccines in this case. <laughs> yeah. Um, these experimental vaccines. Which, in all likelihood, creates and, another problem. Yeah. <laughs> and so now you're looking at a future where there's a possibility where they're going to have to steal money from you again in the future so that they can fix the problem that they created by fixing the problem that they created. Well, and the first problem didn't actually even exist yeah, yet. Exactly. In this scenario, that first problem wasn't actually a problem yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so um, that, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say about that. Well, it's it's darkly comical. Yeah, yeah, it is crazy. And and what's so bad about the whole thing, that I always think about this when it comes to just like government and like when, when, go, when there's a problem that government is trying to fix. Like, so it's only in government where you find that if the government has a problem, the answers always give them more money. Like that's always the answer. Like, Oh, edu- something's wrong with education. Well, we got to get more, we got to get the government more involved and give them more money. Yeah. Like it's never like, that's never the answer in the private sector. Yeah. Like if you own a business and you have a problem, you're finding ways to fix that problem without spending more money. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Government is really the only place where you can so consistently fail upward. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and just create more and more. It's like a snowball effect. Man. Yeah. Um, you you have an issue that you try and get government to fix. The issue continues to be a problem. And so the answer is always that, well, more, government's not doing enough. Yeah. So we just need the government to do more to fix this problem. More government and yeah. more money. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's always, yeah. that's the only solutions they know. And And the fact that it's still a problem is proof to them that, yeah. That you need them. That, yeah, exactly. In some weird way. Yeah. Like, uh, it's, yeah, you have to break yourself of that meant thinking that way. And we're all trained that way. I mean, we've lived mm-hmm. under the government our entire life. Mm-hmm. So it's, you have to really kind of train your brain. No, that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> like, cause, cause you don't initially see it that way, especially mm-hmm. like me and you may see it that way, but we've kind of trained ourselves to look at other options. Yeah. Um, but your, your normies out there, they don't look at it that way. Mm-hmm. Like they, they can't envision a world without government. Right. And that's where we kind of have to like lead them that direction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, and it's, it's really interesting when I talk with people that are, uh, that are partisan at all, but especially the highly partisan, um, is, you know, the government isn't the, the, the problem isn't the other side. Yeah. The Democrats aren't the problem. No. The Republicans are not the problem. Yeah. The problem is the state period. Yeah, exactly. You've got to attack it from that and then move that direction. Yeah. Like. The problem is the government. Yeah. It doesn't matter which party's in control of it. The yeah. problem is, is the, the, the setup. It's yeah. this, it's the system itself. It's the, the structure. Absolutely. Um, and uh, it, it is hard to convince people because they, you know, they believe in an anarchy that's not like what we say when we, like what we're talking about when we say that we're anarchists. Or yeah. when I say that I'm an anarchist. Uh, I, no, I, 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 I make that claim now. Like <laughs> okay. I, I, I defend the anarchist position. Two years of podcasting <laughs> has finally succeeded. Yeah. Um, like when I have these conversations, I haven't um, always, but now I, I identify myself as an anarchist. Like that's. Yeah. Um, and it, it's not a, it's not a world without rules. It's a world without rulers. Yeah. It, yeah. It's not rules that are the problem. It's the, the people that create rules arbitrarily. Yeah. Um, and so that's what, that's the structure that you have to bring down. And in most of these cases, like law being one of the biggest ones, uh, security, yeah. uh, to security, take something that, yeah. that's, um, you know, that people feel is solely the responsibility of the state. Yeah. Um, until at least until this last year yeah. where there's been some more question about it. Uh, but of course I also saw that, you know, a bunch of these governments, when the world was that? Oh. There's a big old truck out there or something. <laughs> I um, guess. Or are there coming? Or a jet is landing on us. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Or an unidentified flying object. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Oh, what was I saying? Oh, uh, a bunch of these cities that uh, that defunded their police forces to a great degree yeah. have huge crime problems now and are now refunding their police forces. Yeah. Um, but well, the the I problem saw... wasn't that they didn't have police that they didn't have a state run police force. The problem was that they didn't have anything to replace it. Yeah. Um, that they they didn't let private security come in there to take over those roles. Well, and of course that would be hard to do anyway, because they're also not giving your tax money back that they used well, to that they took fund from that. the first yeah. place. Yeah. It's not like everybody that cut their police force, um, budgets in half 
uh, refunded their taxpayers that difference. That's, yeah, that money just went to other places. Yeah. Well, I did see an interesting thing on NPR the other night that actually kind of, it's not what the exact scenario you're laying out, but that a lot of areas after George Floyd and whatnot have um, – rolled back their policing. So not done away with policing and not done away with police, but just rolled back their enforcement of small crime. So basically stuff that's not property crime and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And that they're, and, and in those areas, what, at least what this report was saying is that those areas saw that crime didn't increase at all. Yeah. That when you, when you don't enforce stuff, that's kind of bull at the enforce anyway, that things still kind of just move along like they're supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> so, which I thought was interesting. I may have to see if I can dig that report up and get some more detail on it. Cause I just kind of caught the tail end of it when they were talking about, it. but I was like, I mean, that's what I would expect to see. And maybe that's more the answer. I mean, maybe we don't get there all at one time, you know, but rolling back, like just small, like, because especially like we would say drug crime, mm -hmm. like, I mean, the enforcement of drug crime, that's just entrepreneurship. Well, they, they, and to us it is, yeah. But to roll back the enforcement of that can only do good. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you're not going to see. I, I, we, I mean, I well, but drug dealers are violent people. Yeah, because <laughs> because their their art is illegal. <laughs> yeah, and and that's the yeah that's the point exactly yeah. right. Like, um, that it wouldn't have to be violent. Like, alcohol sales are not violent, but they were when it was illegal. Exactly, that's a prime example. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, so. Yeah. Um, so there was a topic that you have been pushing me to talk about for a while. So I wouldn't say pushing you, but I, I thought it would be an interesting, maybe in the show topic to discuss. So the, um, the government is starting to release some of their classified information on UFOs and things of that nature. Um, and it's, it just kind of... I wish I had some theremin music to play. All right, go ahead, <laughs> right? Keep going. So, I mean, I don't have a whole lot, really. I mean, there, there's... So I've watched some of the videos. I mean, I used to follow this stuff really closely years and years ago. I haven't for a long time now. I gave you that book. Did that get lost in the crash? No, um, <laughs> it did not. I've still got okay, it at the house because it lived in my car for a long time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, what book was that again? Um, it was a, a Sagan... Uh, it was, like, it was UFOs. Books. Yeah, it was about the myth of UFOs. Essentially. Oh, okay. Like it was a real breakdown of um, the quote unquote evidence yeah. um, and, uh, you know, alternative theories and how when they were really under scrutiny that a lot yeah. of it just kind of fell apart. Yeah. And that a lot of what I've seen that the government has released at least, like I say, there's pro there may be stuff out there I haven't seen. I haven't watched all of it. Like I, I've, but I watched some of what has been released um, the other night when I was when I knew we were going to talk about this, and it kind of all falls into that category. Like I mean, there's I didn't I haven't seen a whole lot that's like oh my god, like that's absolute. Like there's no question they're here. Yeah. Like I didn't see that. Now I know people haven't interpreted some of it that way because you know I mean that they have had these some odd things buzzing airplanes. There was mm -hmm. a um report. One of the reports they released was um I guess for like days at a time there was a, um they called it a drone. They said it was unmanned, but they couldn't it was doing all kinds of stuff that our drones just aren't capable of doing. It was basically like buzzing, like a aircraft carrier, yeah. just like, like pestering the crap out of this aircraft carrier for days at a time off California. And so they can't say for sure that what it was like, I mean, it's, it's by definition an unidentified flying object. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. UFOs exist. Yeah. It just doesn't necessarily mean they're aliens. Yeah, I mean, it could have been, but the what, what they were saying is it was far enough off the coast that it wasn't something that somebody flew flew out there and started pestering the ship with. Like, mm -hmm. it came from somewhere. Like, I mean, who knows? I mean, I saw one um, report that, that suggested that maybe China or Russia has some kind of advanced technology that, that they're testing out and playing with. But but they but the argument against that though was that this stuff is so sophist sophisticated and beyond what we're capable of. Like they mm -hmm. they the theory is that you couldn't have they couldn't have that type of technology and us not know about it. So yeah, okay, maybe like I mean yeah. that was that was the ideas that that's kind of some of what's been floated and what I've seen out there. Okay. So. Well, the the thing that irritates me about all of these videos and so forth is that they're, they're like the video. Okay, so some sets of videos are just like you looking at a radar screen. Yeah. 
Like, okay, there's anomalies on radar all the time. Yeah. Um, and what they tried to focus on in that book that I gave you is uh, places where there was a visual, um, like there was a visual of the object and it was corroborated by, uh, you know, a by radar somebody, or something, yeah. evidence. Yeah. Um, the, uh, but even then there were alternative explanations that made more sense and yeah. so forth. I don't remember. It, it was, oh, gosh, I probably read that book eight or 10 years ago. Dude, I've um, had it for like a decade. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> And still haven't read it. Still haven't read it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, the the thing that irritates me about the um, the videos, like the of the you know the lights in the sky thing, is that there's never any perspective. Yeah. You can't tell how far away the thing is. You can't tell how big it is. You, there's nothing in there for perspective, so you can't get any kind of idea of scale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that makes those videos essentially useless, as far as I'm concerned. Like you yeah. can't you can't tell anything from that. Um, yeah. Now, I have been of the opinion... Okay, so I believe that there are aliens. Yeah. Like, it's just... The, well, the universe is just too big. That's what um, I was fixing to say. Like, you almost kind of have to... Like, if you believe that the universe exists mm -hmm. and, like, that we're not the center of it... Yeah. You almost have to believe in aliens. Yeah. Because there's something... There's too many possibilities out there. There's no way that this is, like, a, mm -hmm. you know, a one-off. Yeah. That we're a one-off. Well, and even when they make the argument about life here on Earth, like, oh, you know, all of these things had to go right for life to, to develop here on Earth. You know, the, 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 um, the odds are astronomical. Yeah. Um, I, and I agree with that. The odds are astronomical in a, in a general sense, but you got to yeah. also realize that this experiment, such as it is yeah. of the creation of life here on this planet yeah. was happening in every square meter of the planet for a billion years <laughs> just over and over and over yeah. again i mean like, yeah at it, some it, point it only takes once yeah at some point it's gonna hit yeah <laughs> maybe it'll hit more than once it, it may have hit more than once <laughs> um i mean there's actually there's reasonable evidence uh by no means incontrovertible but there's yeah. reasonable evidence that fungus came from somewhere else yeah. Um, spores survive in space. They survive in the vacuum of space. They're light enough to get up into the upper atmosphere and actually escape Earth's gravity. Yeah. Um, and uh, and they don't deteriorate in the the cold and uh, vacuum of space. Yeah. Um, and they seem to fungus seems to have appeared on this planet very suddenly and without any antecedents. Yeah. Like there doesn't all seem of a to sudden be it anything, was just here. <laughs> yeah. There doesn't seem to be anything like it that came before it that yeah. it, it would have evolved from. Yeah. Um, so maybe actually fungus is a extraterrestrial life that found its way to earth. Could yeah. be. Yeah. Um, I, I certainly don't dismiss that idea. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I, I think that that's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Um, but the idea of, uh, of little men flying around in flying saucers on this planet, that's another question entirely. Yeah. And, um, you got to consider the distances between stars. I mean, the closest star to us is four light years away, I think. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a long way. <laughs> right. <laughs> really long way. Yeah. Um, and it, it just seems, and, and travel through space isn't, isn't easy for us certainly yeah. and there are a lot of uh there are a lot of things to overcome to to do that yeah and so then the next part of it is okay so you assume that you assume that there's life out there yeah. you assume that it developed that it's intelligent life you assume that it is technological yeah. because those two aren't the same thing either yeah, yeah um you know whales and dolphins are really intelligent they're yeah. not technological but they're yeah um they don't have thumbs yeah, that's really the big problem, isn't it? Uh, so um, y even you assume it's it's technological and that it's able to overcome the problems of travel in space. Yeah. Well, then finding us. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's another big question. Yeah. The, the distances are huge, and we are one tiny point it, among billions. Yeah. And the, the chances of finding us seem pretty slim, too. Yeah. Of course, I was talking about that with a friend of mine, and he said, well, you, you're missing the most important point, which <laughs> is that they put us here. Yeah. And I was like, oh, geez, you're right. <laughs> well, hey, man, anything's possible. Yeah, it, it is. I think if there is any kind of, uh, 
quote unquote extraterrestrial intelligence on this planet. It's not really extraterrestrial. I yeah. think the most likely scenario of uh, intelligent life that's traveling around and flying Visiting saucers. Us. Yeah. Um, it, it's from the depths of the ocean. Life has yeah. been a, in the oceans for a lot longer than it's been on land. Um, and it seems much more likely that something uh, intelligent and technological could have developed in the depths of the ocean and found its way. I mean, in the same way that we found our way from the surface to the, to the to space to, to the moon uh, that they whatnot. found their yeah. way from the the depths of the ocean to to us to the surface yeah yeah um, always traveling to, up and yeah. and once you get through that actually the the transition from Earth to space at that point isn't actually that big yeah like we can get to space easier and we can get to the depths well so. that's what I was fixing to say and the truth is is we know more about space than we do the depths of our oceans that's true because we can't get to them like the to it's it's the pressure and everything like it's just hard to get down there and even once you're down there it's hard to figure out what's there and what's going on you know yeah light is a problem down there yeah exactly it's not like you get down there and it looks like the sun comes up in the morning and you can see everything right <laughs> so um no I, I think that's a pretty interesting theory and i actually so you posed that theory to me years ago and i've always kind of like well that makes a lot of sense and that theory's out there like so in my searches the other night just kind of reading about this stuff um i mean a lot of people believe that 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 it's likely that that's actually what's going on yeah no i didn't say it was likely i said it was yeah. more likely <laughs> yeah i mean it's i think it's but i think that's fair though like i mean i think that's it's fair to say i mean i'll i'll put it this way like so my position on all of this i don't I don't really know one way or the other. I've never had a close encounter or anything like that, mm -hmm. but I'm open. Like, I mean, a lot of people claim to have, and, yeah. and a lot of the, the reason this deal with the government releasing this information is a big deal, at least for a lot of people. I don't particularly prescribe this. I don't think you do either, but when it's coming from the government, it's coming from a position of, authority <laughs> oh yeah well yeah well, that doesn't do it for me it, i think that the yeah the more likely than intelligent life in the bottom of the ocean um it is more likely that this is some kind of experimental military yeah. um you know craft or or some kind of technology like i've that heard about somebody uh, somebody's testing it, yeah it, i've it heard about radar spoofs and things like that too yeah. that you know if there's yeah. That you can create radar signatures without any physical object. Yeah. Um, uh, I think uh, in this particular case, the release of this information, while a lot of people think it's you know preparing us for them to tell us that the there's, next coming, <laughs> yeah, that, that we've already had contact or whatever. Um, I think it's more likely a distraction. Yeah. Uh, no. For what I don't know. And then there's the the no agenda show theory, which is that um, it is actually uh, advertisement for some upcoming movie. <laughs> well who knows i mean it wouldn't surprise me that no. that actually wouldn't surprise me no. that it's the the government just kind of giving some movie producer a little upper hand yeah um, um and, but you get into the isn't it possible blah 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 like they do on an yeah. ancient aliens uh on the history <laughs> channel for some reason yeah um and uh and this is a problem in and of itself actually um is that people aren't really taught to think critically and actually like you think about um the amount of time that uh people spend watching movies about aliens or or what have you as opposed to um consuming you know documentaries or what have you yeah. but at this point even what's supposed to be educational channel and this is why i don't have cable anymore by the way <laughs> oh yeah um even what's supposed to be educational channels isn't educational anymore yeah. i saw more documentaries in the last couple of years that i had cable on the history channel about aliens mermaids dragons i mean <laughs> all and, of these things that at least some of which definitely don't exist <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm pretty confident i didn't see unicorns but you know yeah. um that one's probably out there by now um, yeah. and and i'm a fan of the the mockumentary like i yeah. but I, not when it's presented from a position where this is an educational program yeah um where this is something to be believed yeah uh and i i, th I think that that's a real problem also yeah. oh yeah um no. but that it, it just seems like uh the most likely thing is that this is some kind of distraction uh and the other side of that is that it could just be something that's being used um to promote because when the government presents it it's about it being a threat yeah like this is a big threat <laughs> right. um and so it could be also something that's being used to justify additional defense spending yeah 
I mean, we already have Space Force. So. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I've always considered myself to be a be a believer and and whatnot. But now that the government's telling me I should, now I'm more skeptical. Yeah. <laughs> I'm finding it a little harder to believe now. Like yeah. Now I'm questioning it. <laughs> Consider your sources. Right. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. If they're pushing it, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and the the crazy Jewish wrestler guy or bodybuilder or whatever he was that now runs the um the he's like the big talker on the ancient aliens things with crazy oh, hair. I, I, I can't think of the guy, George Sukalos or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That guy has no scientific credentials whatsoever. None, uh, none. Uh, I think he does. They, they claim he has a science degree, but I'm pretty sure it's sports science, which is like glorified PE. <laughs> um, and he was, before he started doing this ancient alien stuff, he was a bodybuilder and ran a bodybuilding magazine. Yeah. Well, I've never watched. I've seen which snippets. is why he's got that weird fake tan. <laughs> yeah, I've seen snippets of that show, but I've never watched it. Oh man, I used to watch it a you, lot. You used to uh, hate watching. I know what yeah, you did. No, I had a real love hate relationship <laughs> with Ancient Aliens. Yeah, um, I, I would I, I would put it on at night because it was something that I could kind of ignore while I was falling asleep, and yeah. I would I would literally fall asleep like arguing with it into my pillow. Um, and, but here's the thing that they say all the time is like, isn't it possible that blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, and, and I have to concede. I mean, I like, yeah, yeah it's possible. It is possible. It's um, probable. it's probably the least likely of the possibilities, <laughs> yeah. but it is possible. It's possible. It's not probable, but it's um, possible. I wish I had brought in, everybody should read the demon haunted world by Carl Sagan. Oh yeah. Um, it, it is a, a fantastic book that uh, that equips you um, if you pay attention and can remember it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, it equips you to uh, to s- sense um, what is being presented as fact, but isn't. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that that's probably the nicest way uh, of of saying it. Yeah. Um, to sniff out the BS. Yeah. And. Um, there's a bit in it, and this is the part. Like, I wish I brought it in. I could just read this bit. Of course, me. I don't know how how we infringe on copyrights if I just read Carl <laughs> Sagan reading. over the podcast. But um, it's got to be public domain by now, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, I own the book. So does that mean that I own the content? I don't know. <laughs> at any rate, uh, at the beginning of one of the chapters, he talks about his neighbor who claims to have a dragon in their garage. Oh, the dragon in the garage. You've read me this. And it, it goes through all of these things. So he's like, oh, I want to, you know, let me see the dragon. Yeah. And the guy's like, oh, well, the dragon's invisible. And he says, okay, well, but I can touch it then, right? I can feel it there. And he's, oh, well, the dragon's incorporeal. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, you know, I can throw some dust on the ground and and see where it's, you know, what it's moving through or whatever. Oh, well, no, it floats. You know, I mean, like, and it yeah, just, just like keeps going on and on and on, and on. Well, what about the the fire? Um, I ought to be able to sense the heat from it. Well, no, it's cold fire that it breathes. You know, <laughs> yeah. and at the end of it, he's like, okay, so through all of this, what's the difference between a um, a floating, invisible, incorporeal? Cold fire breathing dragon and no dragon at and all. No dragon at all. <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, What's the fun in owning that dragon? I don't want that dragon. I want the yeah. one that breathes fire I mean, and that people can see. I can't imagine paying anything for that dragon. And then I can ride on. If you can't interact with it, it's certainly not worth having. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not going not to be the king of the Game of Thrones with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, pro- probably not. Um well, we've got a few minutes left. Uh, yeah. There's a couple things you want we can talk about. What, which would you rather? I I told you a couple of topics. Yeah, I talk about the know. military thing. You want to talk about charity? What do you want to talk about? Military thing. Okay, that's actually kind of less interesting, but we'll, we'll do it anyway. <laughs> no, we won't. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the charity thing. Okay, I, I you overruled. Do, you you do you boo. <laughs> <laughs> overruled. Um, okay, so one of the big. Uh, arguments well not it's not even an argument accusations i guess yeah. uh against libertarians is that we don't care about people um that you know that we don't believe in charity that we think that uh you know you made your decisions you you've made your own bed you sleep in it like you screwed up your life that's your problem etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah um and of course that that comes out of us believing in personal responsibility yeah uh, but the truth is that we do believe in charity yeah. Um, we absolutely believe in charity. We just don't believe in government charity 
Because that's yeah. not charity. No, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And back to the thing, uh, you know, about the uh, funding the research and then the vaccines and so forth. That that's, It's the same thing here. It's not charity if you have to take it from somebody else first. Exactly. Right. Um, and then, you know, the of course, some of the people on the left particularly are saying, well, you know, it's like Robin Hood. They're taken from the rich and they're given to the poor. But yeah. what you got to understand there is that in Robin Hood, Robin Hood was stealing back from the state yeah. tax money. <laughs> exactly. That it's actually like, it's a good story. It's the right. Yeah, it's, it's the, the right, right story. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Know? It's just interpreted wrong by the left side. Yeah. In this case, the sheriff of Nottingham is the IRS. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Like that's that's actually what the story is about. Is about the government stealing from the people to the point that they was starving them. Yeah. And that Robin Hood stepped in there and got. He wasn't stealing from the rich to give to the poor. He was taking the poor people's money back from, from the, the state government. Yeah. And giving it back to them. Absolutely. And in and in our case, the government is taking our money and then like blowing up poor people in foreign countries well, with yeah, it. That's a big part <laughs> like, of it too. I mean, that's like a really big part of the problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, th- and that's something that I complain about all the time. And I, I, I actually asked um, my accountant this year. Um, I said, "Is there any way that I can pay the government less than what they say I owe?" Uh, and he said, "What do you mean?" I said, "Well, you know, can I include? Can I only send them seventy-five percent of what they think is my tax liability, uh, um, and with a little note that says that I don't support the war, so I'm not paying the quarter on every dollar that goes to blowing up things other places?" Yeah. <laughs> what was his response to that? He was like, "I can't." do that for you <laughs> <laughs> i'm surprised that what i can do that but they may put you in jail <laughs> well i mean he told me that part too but he can't do that because he's also signing because he's culpable yeah, yeah yeah so um anyway uh yeah i mean that's that's certainly it but all of it all of it is ill but we gangs. but we do but we do believe in charity and we believe in helping people mm-hmm. like i mean that's actually a big to me, that's a big part of libertarianism. And if we do ever abolish the state, like mm-hmm. that'll be a big part of it as people coming together to help. And community is important. Um, mm-hmm. I was talking with somebody a, a while back and, and we were talking about what it would look like not having a government. And like you, charity and all of this would have to be a big part of that. Um, and I personally believe if the government wasn't taking so much of our money, people would be more willing to be charitable because a big a big thing you hear from people who aren't that charitable now is, mm-hmm. well, the, the people are th- that's getting taken care of by the government. Yeah. Well, if you remove that, yeah, then it becomes a, a cop out excuse to not give. To anything. not give, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And I believe in giving. Even, that's what I pay taxes for. That's what I pay taxes for is a yeah. line you hear a lot. Yeah. Um. And and I believe in giving anyway, but mm-hmm. even with the government taking a large portion of my income. Yeah. Um. But I think if, if they didn't, I would have more to give. Exactly. Um. And it doesn't take away that responsibility. So yeah. again, it's personal responsibility. If you think that poor people should have more, then do something about it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And just paying your taxes isn't it. No. And the the unfortunate real truth about it is that all that money that you give to the government, very little of it goes to help people at all. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Like it's a small, it's a small portion. Well, and all you have to do to is look people. at the the debt. I mean, they're not even like. I mean, we're just printing the money now anyway. Yeah, it's not true. like your tax dollars are going towards anything. Yeah. Like the and money's just stealing from the future. Well, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I didn't have anywhere else to go with that. But it's it's like I say. But we we absolutely believe in charity and to have and like I like I kind of said, community's important too. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, yeah, if you don't have a government, that's where your government ends up being. Yeah, is, is at the local level. And the best thing about that is that you know who's taking advantage. Yeah. Um, what the the big welfare state creates is a whole bunch of opportunities to scam the welfare state. Yeah. Um, I mean, not that there aren't people out there that legitimately that need, need help. Yeah. yeah. But there's also a lot of people that are using that system to and taking advantage of that system. Yeah. Um, shoot. Uh, I I've been watching Shameless some. I don't think that I'm going to continue watching. It. I don't think oh, I, yeah. I can. But just look at Frank Gallagher and that. Uh, as a, as an example, yeah. uh, for those of you that have seen the show, I mean, this is a guy who has 
who spends, if he spent half as much time actually working as he spends trying to find a way to scam the system to get money for nothing, yeah. then he would make more money. He'd be doing good. Yeah, yeah he'd right? be fine. Yeah. Um, and he's an intelligent guy, yeah. um, and he's capable of uh, immersing himself to get these these little scams done. Yeah. Um, but all he's trying to do is take advantage of the welfare state. Yeah. In whatever way he can. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and there are plenty of people out there that are doing that. There's yeah. also people that are uh, doing business that is considered by the state to be illegitimate, and so therefore they can't declare it. Yeah. The, those entrepreneurs selling drugs that we were talking about earlier, yeah. um, they can't declare that income. Yeah. Uh, so um, they, uh, there is some... Uh, it is not unusual for them to be um, getting money from uh, some aid. kind of, yeah, government aid. Yep. Um, because the income that they can declare is low enough that they still yeah. qualify. Absolutely. And why wouldn't they take it? Yeah. Well, I mean, why wouldn't you? So that's yeah. sub subsidizing their business. Yeah. <laughs> so just Not think that it needs subsidies. Yeah. Just, just think about that, all of the right-wingers out there, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all these, all this EBT is sub subsidizing the, the pot dealer. <laughs> yeah. Well, and whatnot, <laughs> and the meth dealer, and yeah. the coke dealer, and the, yeah. yeah, um, I don't yeah. know. Uh, so, but the, the point is that if you, if you, and here's where the some insult comes. It, my experience, most of the time, when people say that if the government didn't help those people, nobody would, um, those are people that, given the option, they wouldn't give. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of unfortunate. But going back to the community aspect of it um, and the you know people that are taking advantage of the welfare state, at the community level, you know who really needs help. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know who's... I it's mean, not the, a blind system. Yeah. It's a system that can help the people that truly need it and encourage the people that just want it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and humiliation is a powerful tool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because nobody feels bad about taking money from the government. Not anymore. No. I mean, and not this day and age. I mean, mm -hmm. I do remember a time when, when you it wasn't a good thing to be on EBT and stuff like that. Yeah. But now people don't care. Yeah. Like, it's just, and I don't blame them for not caring. Well, because, they feel like they're being screwed by the system. Yeah. And, and, and I, so they may as well take advantage of what yeah. they can. And I, I feel the same way, honestly. I mean, <laughs> like, I sure as hell didn't send my um, stimulus checks back. Yeah, yeah, me either. Like, I mean, you know, I'm yeah. getting screwed anyway. I'm going to take them for what I can. Yeah, I mean, if they're giving me some of my money back to me, great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it was mine to begin with. <laughs> exactly. Um, I don't know. I didn't have anywhere else really to go with that either. I just I just wanted to bring that up because it is, it, is it is a criticism that we receive yeah. um, regularly. And I, I do uh, do regular charitable donations um, and... I mean, hell, even simple stuff like the other night when we stopped and helped that guy uh, <laughs> whose truck was broken down. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and here's the story for everybody. Like, we were coming back from dinner, um, night before last, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, and we passed this guy whose truck was broken down, and he was in a wheelchair, and he was out there trying to pull equipment out of trying the back of his unload. truck. Yeah, this uh, truck, and it was, yeah, it was like, oh, we got to stop and help yeah, that guy. Yeah, on the side of the highway. And so we did yeah. a U-turn and came and parked and helped him pull the equipment out of the back of his truck. And, yeah, yeah. And then we yeah. went on our way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? So. I mean, but the guy obviously needed help. Yeah, yeah. You can't just, like, drive by. I, that's me. Like, I mean, if I see somebody, on the particularly on the side of the road, I've spend enough time on the side of the road like <laughs> i appreciate people that cut stop and help so i i try to be one of those people anytime i can yeah <laughs> so yeah absolutely and it's just little things like i stopped to help turtles across the road <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> yeah i hate seeing turtles remember actually we went and saw um chris ann hall yeah. in dothan or wherever we were i can't oh, remember yeah and we were pulling we were coming out of that um that event yeah and uh we passed this turtle crossing the road and yeah. we found a place to turn around and come back to help the turtle and it was too late it was yeah and it really was bad because like the car that had like passed us by is the uh -huh. one that ended up hit like if yeah we had, it was the only car that passed us. yeah that, yeah <laughs> exactly dude in the truck probably aimed for that turtle yeah. which is really a shame well maybe maybe not but at yeah. any rate yeah the turtle didn't make it, <laughs> it was, we tried we did Turn back and try. I remember, I've forgotten about that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. on that note, 
On that sad note. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a positive note. It's a hopeful note. Help those turtles across Help the road. Help the turtles across the road. <laughs> they need your help. Uh, they do. Don't be afraid they, to stop. They, they don't realize where they're at. They, keep they, keep they, your hands away from their mouth, but <laughs> yeah. don't be afraid to help. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. Um, well, uh, as always, um, subscribe, like, follow, uh, YouTube, Podbean, iTunes, Facebook, share and comment and criticize and whatever. Yeah. Um, all, all comments welcome unless you're just, you know, being the jerk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and we'll be back in roughly a week, hopefully regularly on Thursday for a while at least. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so we'll be back in a week when we, uh, finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. The truth is out there. <laughs> Ciao. Later. Thank mm-hmm. you.